She walked into the ER, a woman with a belly so big she looked 10 months pregnant. Her chart stated an age of 45, but she looked more late 50s, with scraggly hair and skin weathered by a lifetime in the sun. This was an overnight shift in the emergency department at the UT Health Sciences Center. It was midwinter. I asked my coworker, how overdue is she? I imagined this woman walking around with a swollen belly, earning smiles and congratulations as she passed by. But instead of carrying life, she was festering with death. At least a year overdue, my coworker said. That tumor has to have been in there for a long time. I walked into the patient's room. She was breathing quickly, but was able to tell me that for the last year, she had been looking for a hospital that would operate on her. She was uninsured and pretty certain she had cancer. A few weeks ago, she had visited an emergency room in a rural area north of Tyler. A CT scan performed at that time showed a large mass arising from her pelvis, most likely ovarian cancer, the radiologist had remarked. So, with the help of a couple of friends with access to a vehicle, she made the hour-long journey to East Texas's medical hub, Tyler. My name is Sandhya Devraj. I'm a family medicine resident here in Tyler, originally from Maryland. I moved to Texas after spending a few years in Chicago, where my husband and I worked and attended medical school. I've watched my fill of medical TV shows over the last two decades, and I know the tropes well. I'm the idealist who always wants to believe that problems have solutions, but it only took a few months into my residency here in Tyler to learn that while solutions may exist, they're not always attainable. Working within a national healthcare system that does not allow me to do my job is a broken one and leaves me feeling dejected at times. My supervising physician was sad. He had seen this before, suffering immensely and uninsured. But despite the turmoil and chaos of her life, at this very moment, the patient was medically stable. And being medically stable while uninsured was not doing her any favors because it made it harder for her to get set up with the kind of physician she needed in a timely manner. Our job was no longer providing medical care. It was looking for a reason to admit her. And we looked. Blood work showed the severe anemia one would expect with such a ravenous tumor, but sadly not low enough to provide a blood transfusion to offer her some relief. Her vitals were stable. The CT scan from a few weeks ago showed a 12 centimeter mass arising from the pelvis, shoving all her internal organs to the side. No wonder she can't breathe, I said. That tumor is pushing up really hard on her diaphragm. She's breathing really fast though. Maybe she's not oxygenating well. Let's get an arterial blood gas. This would show us how much oxygen was really getting into her blood. If it were abnormal enough, maybe we had our reason to admit her. I walked into the patient's room. She was crying softly. Do you know someone who can help me, she asked. I told her we had a plan at the moment and that we were working on her. I got the arterial blood gas myself. When I saw the results, my heart sank. Your pulmonary function is normal, I told her. And with that, her two friends, tired of driving their dying friend around East Texas, got up and left. The patient sat in the ER lobby, waiting for the sun to rise before deciding what she would do next. A sympathetic nurse brought her a food tray. When I checked the lobby at the end of my shift, she was gone. I've kept an eye out for her since, but so far as I know, she's never returned to our hospital. As I mentioned, I'm from Maryland, and I spent a lot of time in Illinois, two states that expanded Medicaid access in the last decade. I'm also Indian, which means I grew up spending a lot of time in India. While India has its growing pains as an emerging economy, it is a country that understands health care as a right and guarantees a basic level of medical care to all of its residents. These ideas have shaped my thinking and training and inspired me to enter medicine. As of July 2020, I learned that 29% of Texan adults under the age of 65 are uninsured. This woman dying of an untreated tumor came to symbolize this problem. It is not a problem I can shake by talking about it or by seeing positive outcomes for other, more fortunate patients. Moving to Tyler, I found myself in a community that deeply prized its religious values and traditions. I have stood alongside Tylerites visiting the homeless, praying for their sins and offering words of betterment. But 
it is access to medical care, not greater responsibility that can cure a raging cancer. To my surprise, even some of the physicians I have worked with respectfully disagree with me on this point. And now, there is a pandemic raging through our country. The uninsured multiply as quickly as the poor, the homeless, and the dead. Like many healthcare workers, I feel overwhelmed at this. My feelings intensify when I see the shiny new tower at the hospital downtown, complete with valet service. Like I mentioned, I attended medical school in Chicago, Loyola University, a Catholic Jesuit institution. Our university's motto in Latin was ad majorum de gloriam, meaning for the greater glory of God. Even as a Hindu, those words resonated with me, and I hope they can with my East Texas neighbors. I ask you to consider this East Texas woman dying for lack of access to medical care. It is my hope that offering sustainable solutions for people like her can be seen as an act of worship. Sonia, that was an amazing story. Thank you so much for sharing it. For patients and colleagues who are open to it, how have you challenged them, challenged their behaviors and assumptions? So I am most passionate when I talk about the things that I really care about. And so I always try to be myself. When I find that someone might share some values or some ideas in common with me, I always try to encourage what I see are positive um, civic traits. Um, lately, that's been encouraging people to vote, especially because it affects healthcare so much. And since coming, since starting my residency, we have been seeing many patients losing their insurance, losing access to their source of income. And so that's become even more relevant in these last few months. Thank you so much, Sandia, for sharing your story here on Out of the Loop. Thank you. All right. Thank you.